Uh, the vanadium battery is a convention is like a conventional battery, but it's a cross between a battery and a fuel cell. So like uh, normal batteries, it can undergo many charging and discharging cycles, but like a fuel cell, it, the amount of energy that it stores depends on how much fuel that we just supply. But instead of using fuel, we actually use solutions to store the energy. And in our case, we use vanadium solutions. The reason we chose vanadium is because vanadium exists in many different what we call oxidation states, which means that they can lose one, two, three, four, five electrons. And that means that when we charge or discharge, we can put on one side of the, ba the battery, we can use V2, V3 as our reactant, and on the other side we use V4, V5 as our reactant. And because we use the same element in both half cells, we overcome the problem of cross-contamination. And that's a problem with, which arises in other types of redox, redox fuel cells, which use different elements in, both, in, in, in each half cell. And that's what NASA was doing many years ago in the 1970s. They were using iron and chromium, and that suffered from cross-contamination. So by using vanadium, it means that our electrolyte has an indefinite life. We don't have to replace it because of contamination. And that means that the replacement costs are extremely low. Now, the way vanadium batteries work, it's a, it's a flow battery. So the energy is stored in the electrolytes in uh, two tanks, and the power is generated in the cell stacks. So the, those electrolytes are pumped through the cell stack where electrons are transferred from one side to the other and therefore generate electricity. Now the, the size of the tanks and the volume of our solutions determines how much energy, we, in other words, how many kilowatt hours we can generate. The size of our stacks or the number of stacks we have determines the power, the kilowatts. And with flow batteries, in normal batteries, you're sort of restricted by the ratio of the power to the energy. You, you, there's not much flexibility. But with flow batteries, if you want a certain amount of power, you can choose the, the, the number of cell stacks that you have. But if you want to run that power for one hour, two hours, three hours, 10 hours, 20 hours, you just change the volume of the tanks and the volume of the solutions, which makes it extremely flexible. And not only that, because you're increasing the energy means it requires only increasing the volume of your solutions. That mean the, means the cost for every additional kilowatt hour you install becomes much, much very low. So that means for applications where you want to store, for example, three, four, five, six hours of storage, which is very important in renewable energy. In renewable energy, you need to be able to store at least four hours of storage to be able to store as much of the solar or wind energy so you can use it at night time or when the wind, or for when, or when the wind stops blowing, for example. The cost per kilowatt hour becomes very, very low when you've got many hours of storage. And compared to other types of batteries, then you start to get very, very low costs, both capital costs and also because the, the, it can undergo indefinite numbers of cycles, you know, hundreds of thousands of cycles, it means that the operational costs over the life of the battery is also very low. And that, that's what makes it very attractive compared to other types of batteries. Now, other features which are very important, the fact that it's much safer. Lithium batteries, for example, everyone knows that they can catch fire, uh, they can explode. There have been quite a few instances where this has happened. Flow batteries, because especially vanadium, because it uses water as the main ingredient and vanadium is added to, to that, then they can't catch fire. So inherently they're much, much safer than other types of batteries. Now, this battery was invented here in Australia in the, in the 1980s. And for many years we had quite a lot of interest from, from a lot of companies, especially in Japan. But unfortunately the market for energy storage hadn't yet developed. Even though we were seeing a lot of renewable energy coming into the grid, at the time the renewable energy companies were maintaining that you, the grid is the storage medium for the renewable energy, that you don't need to store it separately. But that became quite apparent once they started putting large wind farms onto the grid, that it destroyed the stability of the grid. So, renew, so energy storage started to emerge as a, as a main, as, a, as an important issue for expanding renewable energy uh, in the grid especially. So you know, if we want, now that we are, if, you know, even though a lot of con some countries, for example, in Australia, we don't really have a very big commitment to expanding renewable energy. I think even the, just the fact that we've introduced so much, so many houses in Australia now have solar panels on their roof is causing all sorts of issues in terms of the stability of the grid at different times of the day. So 
a lot of people are now putting actually batteries into their houses to, be, to store their energy during peak times at, at night time. But for large scale wind farms, for uh, large scale solar farms, these batteries, for, uh, re vanadium batteries, are actually going to be much better because they can, they're ideal for these megawatts grid connected applications, basically because of the cost and the vers versatility as well.